Oh, no, no, Rolly didn't overestimate him. And this is this is boxing. Shit happens. This is boxing. It's not a, he didn't overestimate him. He was in phenomenal shape. Um, he he did some good things in the fight. Yo, that was a crazy fight. That was a that was a barn. Did Rolly come back from that, Teddy? Huh? I think, I think he come back from that. He took a beating a little bit at the end. He took a little beating, but I think they stopped in time, so they kind of saved his career. Major boxing matches offer a spectacle cherished by aficionados of the sport and casual viewers alike, yet their outcomes don't uniformly favor both contenders. In the end, victory for one necessitates defeat for the other. When facing a fighter like Gervonta Davis, one often encounters a crossroads, either bask in supreme glory or endure a setback to one's career. Isaac Cruz found himself caught in the latter, as his encounter proved to be a significant momentum halter. Pitbull swiftly ascended the ranks in the lightweight division, only to face defeat by a unanimous decision against Tank. Merely 23 years old then, Cruz had to bounce back and reclaim his reputation to fully capitalize on his youth. After securing two knockout triumphs and clinching a narrow split decision victory, he positioned himself for a shot at the world title against Raleigh Romero who had previously fallen to Davis shortly after facing Cruz. In the electrifying Saturday night showdown, Cruz left no room for doubt as he dismantled Romero, seizing the championship belt with a relentless eighth-eighth round knockout. Following the intense bout, Sean Gibbons, the mastermind behind Cruz's career and the helm of MP promotions, didn't shy away from making a daring proclamation regarding his prized fighter. He said, there's Canelo and there's Pitbull, you heard about this place. He can main event on his own. We know he can headline himself. That's what he did tonight with 14,726 in the building. I would say a star was born. He is a Mexican Mike Tyson. Naturally, it's expected for a promoter to elevate the status of their boxer, particularly following a decisive knockout victory. Cruz undeniably possesses a wealth of talent, a fact he has consistently demonstrated from a tender age on numerous occasions. His popularity extends south of the border into Mexico, ensuring sizable audiences at his shows across the southwest region. Cruz faces stiff competition from the likes of Juan Francisco Estrada, Jaime Munguia, Emmanuel Navarrete, and others in vying for the coveted second spot behind Canelo Alvarez. Rolando Romero faced a challenging night as he stepped into the ring against Isaac Cruz. Despite his best efforts, the outcome was far from favorable. Not only did he suffer a setback in his record, but he also relinquished his WBA Superlight title to Cruz, aptly nicknamed the Pitbull. However, the verdict on the scorecard stirred controversy, drawing dissent from notable figures like Clarissa Shields. From the outset, Cruz seized command of the bout with unwavering determination. He swiftly penetrated Raleigh's defenses, unleashing a devastating left hook to the temple in the initial round. This defining moment established the tone for the showdown, marking Raleigh's inaugural defense since clinching the championship last year by beating Ismael Barroso. Cruz maintained his dominance throughout, culminating in a pivotal moment in the eighth round when he felled the Las Vegas-based fighter, securing the WBA title via technical knockout. Although the judges overwhelmingly favored Cruz, one dissented in favor of Raleigh, sparking tumultuous controversy in the aftermath of the match. Upon the unveiling of the Cruz versus Raleigh bout scorecard, spectators were left astounded by the figures presented. Amidst two judges tallying 63, 69, and 64, 68, both in Cruz's favor, a stark contrast arose with Chris Flores's score of 66, 65, tipping the scales towards Raleigh. Had the match not concluded in a knockout, and had these assessments persisted, the 25-year-old Mexican pugilist would have still clinched victory, albeit via a contentious split decision. Numerous individuals were underwhelmed by the judge's decision to rule in favor of Raleigh. Boxer Ishii Olua Kamau Ali Smith said, whatever judge had Raleigh up needs to be banned from boxing. Fucking ridiculous. Concurring with what Ali Smith expressed, undisputed middleweight champion, Clarissa Shields also went off on the judge. She insinuated that the judge's integrity was compromised, asserting that corrupt precisely captured his demeanor. Replying to the post, she wrote, Man, can you say corrupt? Despite the judge's verdict diverging from public sentiment, Cruz remained resolute, finding strength in his triumph. 
Post the fight at the presser, Cruz dedicated the win to his family and Mexican roots. He remarked, I'm very happy and humbled to win this title for my family and for Mexico. Going into the fight, he was prepared for the worst to befall. That preparation pulled him through and got him the win. He further explained, I was prepared for this. I wasn't here to just fight. I was here to terminate him. I did my talking right here in the ring. And I did this not just for me, but for everybody that is here at T-Mobile Arena. There's going to be a Mexican champ at 140 pounds for a long time. The contender has relentlessly pursued a rematch with Gervonta Davis since his narrow loss in 2021. With his recent victory in securing the championship title, he solidified his dominance in the lighter weight classes. This achievement brings him one step closer to a showdown with Tank. Could this be his next destination? Moreover, as Cruz ascended to the throne of WBA super lightweight champion, Ryan Garcia wasted no time seizing the chance to challenge the freshly crowned champion. After surrendering the super lightweight world title, Raleigh Romero came to grasp the profound impact of his pre-match rhetoric against Isaac Pitbull Cruz. The repercussions of his words manifested vividly in the ring, where Cruz clinched the WBA super lightweight championship with a resounding eighth round knockout victory. Presently, Ryan Garcia seems to be mirroring Raleigh Romero's approach, engaging in trash talk without fully comprehending the challenge ahead, all in an attempt to provoke Devin Haney the Pitbull. Garcia's upcoming bout in April will see him vying for the WBC super lightweight title against Haney. They both use my name pretty much to, to build their fight off when, to me, it doesn't make sense. Like, why Rollies, or if I'm him, right? Why would I get beat up on a co-main event for less money when he could have been the main event and get clipped against the guy that people actually will see as, oh, okay, but you lost to Ryan. Following his decisive victory by technical knockout, Pitbull emerged as the focal point of the boxing world. Despite the lucrative prospect of squaring off against Gervonta Davis for a hefty purse, he took the opportunity during his celebratory moment to issue a bold challenge to any contender willing to step into the ring with him. Garcia immediately talked about a challenge claiming, you don't know boxing if you really think Pitbull beats me. I fought so many fighters like that in my life it would be a field day. I would put Pitbull Cruz to sleep. You guys are delusional, but after I beat Haney, I'll gladly handle it easily, a possible fight with the Mexican champion. Ryan Garcia's tendency to take breaks from his preparations for his upcoming bout against Devin Haney on April 20th isn't new, but this time around his approach seems less controversial. He recently showed respect to Cruz, which contrasts with his previous controversial remarks. Despite this, Garcia still managed to stir up some controversy with his tweets. In one instance, he confidently stated his ability to defeat Cruz and Haney, dismissing any opposing views as uninformed about boxing. He also took aim at Raleigh Romero, referencing a past fight where Romero underestimated his opponent and suffered a knockout. Garcia suggested that Romero should stick to influencer boxing, indicating his belief that Dean could defeat him. Gervonta Davis, who has faced both Garcia and Haney, didn't express much surprise at the potential outcome of their upcoming match. According to his perspective, both of them demonstrated their fighting prowess in this match. He asserted that he outperformed the other two contenders, despite initially appearing to support Raleigh. However, the tables turned in Pitbull's favor. Reflecting on the bout, he likened it to his own experience facing Pitbull, where the outcome favored the latter. After defeating Romero, Cruz catapulted himself into the spotlight of lucrative Las Vegas bouts and hefty million-dollar paydays, catching the attention of none other than Ryan Garcia, who extended a tantalizing challenge for a much-anticipated showdown. During the press conference following the match, Pitbull Cruz took a stand against Ryan Garcia's comments and communications with a resounding reply. Yo no me cierro, como lo he dicho, yo aquí estoy para pelearle ahora en 140 y demostrarle que estamos igual de fuertes o más fuertes que en 135 y también callarle la boca. I'm not about to dodge Ryan Garcia, I'm ready to fight him on 140. If he wants to, I'm ready. Moreover, he reassured his supporters that he never shies away from a challenge, provided the compensation meets the mark. He said, I do not refuse to fight anyone. As long as they reach a good agreement between companies or handlers, I will fight whoever and wherever. Raleigh Romero found himself in a dire situation, thoroughly defeated and embarrassed by the formidable Pitbull Cruz, who issued warnings to anyone daring to challenge him. 
I think I proved that you better respect a pit bull because whoever calls him Chihuahua here is going to see reflected how he's going to end up like Rolando tonight, added Cruz in clear allusion to Ryan Garcia's challenge. Right after the thrilling matchup, boxing experts swiftly shared their thoughts on the showdown between Rolando Romero and Isaac Cruz. While the results surprised some, others found validation in their predictions and analyses. Moments ago, the highly anticipated World Boxing Association Championship title bout concluded, leaving many stunned by the unexpected outcome, especially those who had bet on a victory for Rolando Romero. Rolando Raleigh. Romero entered the ring as the underdog, but he left no doubt in the minds of spectators that his victory over Barroso was indeed deserved. Isaac Pitbull Cruz, determined to put an end to Romero's reign, dominated the match, securing an eighth-round TKO victory and claiming the WBA super lightweight title. From the onset, Cruz had Romero reeling, rendering the latter ineffective throughout the bout. Despite Romero's powerful punches, they seemed futile against Cruz's resilience. As the fight progressed, Cruz consistently punished Romero, leading to a one-sided seventh round. With Romero visibly struggling, the ringside doctor signaled to referee Thomas Taylor, hinting at the need for a stoppage. When Romero faltered once more in the eighth, Taylor intervened, declaring Cruz the victor. This marked Cruz's inaugural world title, achieved in his debut at the 140 pounds division. In the bustling streets of Las Vegas, fervent support resonated for the Mexican warrior, clamoring for a shot against the 140-pound division's elite. Yet the path ahead appears daunting, with none of the top contenders currently under the premier boxing champion's banner. This predicament casts a shadow of doubt over Romero's aspirations. It's becoming increasingly evident that he remains distant from the echelon of the sport's true luminaries. While he commands attention and intrigue, his prowess within the ropes fails to match the demands of elite competition. What lies ahead for him remains uncertain as the chasm between ambition and ability widens. Immediately following the match, Floyd Mayweather, who notably had Romero signed under his promotion, was the first to offer his thoughts in a brief interview. Despite the expectation of favoritism towards Romero due to their association, Mayweather delivered an impartial assessment. He acknowledged the opponent's dominance, stating, yeah, the guy was great in the match. Romero was no match for him. He was all over him. Mayweather's comments reflected a fair evaluation of the bout, recognizing the superiority of the victorious boxer while also expressing optimism for Romero's future. He noted, he did well, but Romero will bounce back. This hopeful outlook on Romero's comeback likely stemmed from the boxer's own post-match declarations of a return demonstrating Mayweather's support for his protege's resilience and determination. Although his response resembled the scattered thoughts of someone just emerging from a coma, when questioned about the match, he made a unique allusion to the resurrection of Jesus Christ and how he planned to stage his own comeback in a similar fashion. Despite never being knocked down, he acknowledged the possibility and potential danger of such a scenario. Tom Taylor interjected at this point, wisely stopping the conversation before it went any further. Pitbull's performance in the match showcased his true capabilities. While he knocked Romero out in round seven, Pitbull achieved the same feat in round eight. Thus, he argued his superiority, not only because he defeated Pitbull, but also because he had previously defeated Romero. The victory rightfully belonged to the winner, and that was Pitbull. As for Romero, he suggested the boxer take a break, as the sport of boxing doesn't tolerate weakness. Additionally, Gervonta Davis chimed in, concluding that the match against the older opponent was unjustly decided, hinting at a robbery. The recent match featuring Raleigh Romero marked a significant moment as it secured him the world title after a contentious battle against Ismael Barroso. Much of the talk surrounding the fight revolves around the referee's pivotal role in determining the outcome. Romero managed to score two successive knockdowns against his 40-year-old opponent, with the initial one appearing to be more of a push to the ground. However, it was the second knockdown that stirred controversy, as despite Barroso seemingly fit to continue after the count, the referee declared Romero the victor. This decision has ignited debates within the boxing community, with many questioning the fairness of the outcome. It's no surprise that Gervonta has made reference to this match, considering its controversial nature. As we shift our focus to the legendary Mike Tyson, who is set to compete on July 20th, 
He was recently asked for his thoughts on the upcoming match. Tyson responded with admiration for his opponent, expressing how he sees shades of himself in Cruz. He remarked, he may lack in stature, but he possesses the heart and skill to take down taller opponents. I've been there before. When I watched the first round, I knew who would emerge victorious. Congratulations to him. His victory is truly well earned. I hope his opponent can glean some valuable lessons from this experience. Additionally, Terence Crawford, the reigning champion of the World Boxing Organization, World Boxing Council, and World Boxing Association, showered praise upon Isaac Cruz. According to Crawford, Cruz has immense potential to scale even greater heights in the realm of boxing. Crawford stated, The guy is undeniably talented, and he has a lot more ground to cover. It was an enthralling bout, and I'm glad I tuned in. Cruz ensured there were no dull moments. Bill Haney and his son Devin weren't shy about sharing their thoughts on the upcoming matchup. Bill seized the opportunity to call out Ryan Garcia, expressing confidence in Devin's ability to overcome him. I enjoy watching these smaller fighters showcase their skills, but let's face it, magic doesn't prevail every time, Bill remarked. Devin will stylishly knock him out in the second round, he added, echoing his father's sentiment. Devin himself chimed in, affirming their belief in Cruz's inevitable victory. It's no secret, Cruz was always going to come out on top. Anyone who thought otherwise was just kidding themselves, he remarked. Now it's on to the next challenge, Devin concluded confidently. As for Raleigh Romero's coach who had previously dissected the upcoming match and outlined their strategy, they had this to say, Romero is prepared for whatever comes his way. Oscar De La Hoya, the esteemed Olympic gold medalist and former world champion known as the golden boy of boxing, couldn't help but be impressed by the sheer intensity and vigor of the match. Many fans echoed his sentiments, expressing their elation for the riveting showdown. Some fans think that Raleigh was absolutely slaughtered in his very first defense. Whoever thought he stood a chance in the first place must have been joking. According to fans, Raleigh seems utterly humiliated after that bout. It's astounding what Pitbull has just done to him. Supporters of Pitbull believe that it's incredible how the entire arena rallied behind Cruz. Moreover, Cruz is certainly carving out a name for himself. He's stepping onto the canvas of greatness. It's exciting to ponder how far his talent will take him. That boy has a promising future ahead of him. In the next five years, he's bound to be nothing short of astonishing. Some observers brought forth an intriguing insight. Pitbull seemed to have studied Joshua and Francis extensively, eagerly seeking a first-round knockout. However, his demeanor only relaxed once he realized this tactic wasn't yielding results. Despite his stature, he continues to exemplify one of the most well-rounded fighters you'll encounter. He stands as the benchmark to surpass. Following his recent triumph, Cruz has secured victory in four successive bouts since his defeat against WBA 135 pounds champion Kervonta Davis in 2021. Romero's recent track record shows a mixed bag with just one victory in his last trio of fights. His setback came in a six-round bout against Davis back in 2022. While there's optimism for a resurgence, whether he rebounds or not, the departure of this former champion from the ring leaves a somber note echoing throughout the world of sports today. Overall, the reactions from figures across the boxing community, ranging from Floyd Mayweather's fair assessment to the fiery critiques from Clarissa Shields, underscore the bout's significance and the broader implications for the fighters involved. As Cruz looks ahead to new challenges and Romero contemplates his next steps, the boxing world watches eagerly, knowing that the path to glory is fraught with both peril and opportunity. The story of Cruz and Romero serves as a vivid illustration of boxing's enduring allure, a blend of talent, tenacity, and the relentless quest for redemption and triumph. So that's all from today's video. If you enjoyed it, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell icon so you never miss our upcoming videos. And don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section. Stay tuned and we will catch you in the next video.